So let's have a little lesson on green sleeves by Francis Cutting. And you can get the free sheet music um, from the link under the YouTube video, or if you're on the site, it should be there. Um, it's a free notation version and a free clean version of the score as well. And I also include the original French tablature by Cutting as well, so you can kind of take a look at what the original French tablature looks like. If you're looking for an easier green sleeves, because this is kind of on the intermediate level, um, it's kind of awkward with all the big chords. If you're looking for just a nice, simple, um, modern um, arrangement of green sleeves, you can check one out in my Easy Classical Guitar series, um, which I put a link to that in the, in the YouTube info as well. Um, but this one is much more on the intermediate level. It's a little bit awkward here and there. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're deciding to play it. So just a couple of things about this piece. So first thing, this is Green Sleeves by Francis Cutting. This is a 16th century, so a Renaissance setting of the piece. All that means is that um, a Renaissance lute player arranged it for lute and wrote it out in French tablature, which is an older style of tablature that uses letters instead of numbers for the frets. And um, so it's like a real Renaissance setting of the piece, which is really cool because um, it's so old, right? Um, other things I'll say is that I'm using regular tuning for this piece because it works fairly well in regular tuning. Um, however, the original would have had the third string tuned down to an F sharp relative to lute tuning. If you want a more accurate lute tuning, you could probably put a capo at the third fret and that would be more close to their tuning. But um, I've kept it in regular guitar tuning because it works fairly well. There's a few sections where it's a little bit more awkward. But if you tune down to F sharp, this piece has a couple of sections that are also awkward if you tune down. So um, I've included a clean copy of the score, so more advanced players can use um, alternate tunings if they wish. Um, so it, it kind of leaves it up to you. This is essentially a set of variations or divisions on green sleeves. So you hear the melody again and again, um, but with different textures. So the loop player changes the texture. So there's sometimes there's more activity, like in the end of the piece, there's like constant eighth notes. In the beginning of the piece, there's not. Um, so it's, a, it's like a small set of variations on green sleeves, which is pretty cool. Um, one thing I'll say um, is that when you're practicing this piece, the first thing, as with any piece that has a melody or is a set of variations on a theme, um, you want to make sure that you you're playing the melody um, the way you want it. Okay, so the, the, the main thing is that you want to get really used to the melody in this piece. So the melody is generally in the top voice. get really used to the melody and of course this is like cuttings um, the way that he would have heard the melody so it might be different than the way that you know Greensleeves but it's been a long time since the 16th century right so um, get to know his version of the melody really well 
by playing that melody on its own. Just um, because the chords are a little bit awkward, so when you add them in, you want to make sure that your sense of the melody is very, very clear. Your main goal is to bring out that melody despite all the fancy chords that might be used in this piece. You must maintain that flowing melody as best you can, as best possible with all these intervening chords. So um, once you really have the melody the way you want it, uh, make sure you think about the rhythm uh, very carefully. It's in 6-8 time, just really emphasize the one, the one and the four, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, So by really kind of like going for those larger beats, it takes a little bit of pressure off the um, every single note. It's pretty thick, so if you emphasized every single beat, uh, it would get kind of thick in the in the left hand and get kind of difficult. You want to just glide through the piece and and bounce to it a little bit and not put emphasize, emphasis on every single beat. So just get that larger sway. One, two, three, four, five, six, or even just think of it in two. One, two. One, da, da, two, da, da. And, and then just fit it in like that. I think I added an extra bass note there, but um, just that nice dance feel, right? So let's just do a little um, walkthrough. I don't have that much to say otherwise. Um, right hand fingering, uh, just bass line with your thumb all the stems up with your fingers. Um, that You'll have to repeat fingers sometimes for all the chords in this one. It's pretty thick, but when possible, um, try to avoid it. So here, just make sure you use your fourth finger down here because if we want that melody to be clean, we need um, the melody notes to ring out while we finger the chord with other fingers. It's all notated on my free edition, of course. It's a little bit of an awkward chord change. Those kinds of chord changes... I mean, anyone that strums chords, you'll be used to those kinds of things, but in the classical context of voice leading, it's a little bit awkward. But it is a lute piece, and, and they did throw in chords like that, so just try to smooth it out as best as possible while getting that yada as smooth as possible, right? A curious off note, offbeat bass note is a little bit tricky to get in. I miss it sometimes. Bar 9. you have to I would hinge bar it so you're doing a bar but you're not actually touching the other strings yet that way you can move into that smoothly the original has a B as well it's a little bit hard to hold on to so I edit it out I put it in brackets so keep your bar down through there that bar that little bar section, it's not that bad. It's pretty secure, right? It's like you get to like lay your finger down on the third fret. You might have to practice getting it clean and reaching out for just a couple of notes, but it's at least, it's quite secure. That part's pretty awkward. Um, It, that part might have worked a little bit better with um, a detuned string, but not that much because of, of some of the extra notes you'd have to fret, um, for, which are otherwise open strings here. The main point is just to follow your fingering carefully, making sure you have your second finger in the bass so your third finger can play the other notes. It's not that hard. Um, you have to jump around a little bit, but just you have to just know the fingerings very well. chord you can
can kind of cheat a little bit. Active, but I love that part. It's, get, it's getting more and more active as we go. Use your first finger, that way your second finger can come here, so that your third finger can be played here. Um, it's one of those fingering situations where you have to look forward to what's coming next. Bar 25. Just active eighth notes. Just you have to reach out, but again, it's pretty secure. And then bar early, that way, you can just slide it down. I think in the original, uh, I think when I played it before, I think I added an extra bass note at the end. Uh, just play it the way it's notated, though. It's just a, a smaller chord going to the tonic. So again, reach out, and then bar early. Um, I think the whole piece is a little on the awkward side, but you just have to get used to this lute-like delivery of like playing chords. Not don't roll every chord, but. And really focus on the larger beat structure. Um, I think that will allow you to have a dance feel and to put less emphasis on the notes in between the main beats. Um, that will really help um, just smooth everything out and allow you to kind of put emphasis on some chords but play other chords very lightly without much pressure on you to like really deliver um, clarity on every single chord. Um, without that kind of bouncy light feel, the chords could really weigh you down. But I, I don't think that's supposed to be the experience here. I think it should be just very dancey um, and, um, and you really just aim for those dance beats.